Rich Neiman. Thank you. I brought my technology to watch my time. I will start it now. How do you make an impact in the world? You saw it with Ellen. You saw it with Commissioner Steele. You saw it with Poonam. You saw it with some of our other distinguished guests. And the answer is, you have to care. You have to actually care. You have to actually want to. You have to want to make that impact. What about innovation? What if you're using yesterday's technology? The enterprise that does not innovate ages and declines. And in a period of rapid change, such as today, the present, that decline will be fast. Peter Drucker, very good management speaker. So how do you make an impact? Uh, some of the things, oh, got a no technology. Shift F5, put you on the current slide, in case you're wondering. I built a company, it's called Tusk. I'm in the Chicago Entrepreneur Hall of Fame. When I was building Tusk in 1988, I needed energy about 10 years in. I was dying. Got an award, Entrepreneur Hall of Fame. University of Illinois, Chicago, Jerry Hills Center of Entrepreneurship teaches that. When you look at some of the books I've written over the years, the only goal was to educate other people. So why is that? Because of this award, all the way down at the bottom. I never bring it up, except here. Trio Achiever Award. How many people know what Trio is? How many people know what Upward Bound is? Student Special Services. So I was a poor kid on the south side of Chicago, Indiana, Illinois border, and somebody took the time. My mother actually said, you know what, I think I can get you a job as a janitor at the Y. That was her level of expectation. I thought, whoa, <laughs> wow. Then I met somebody from Upper Bound said, we will educate you and make you great. We will take what you have learned on the streets you take that to the business world, you'll have something they don't have. And that was the key to all the other success. You know, and I've spoke all over the world, China, India, Australia, Europe, Poland, Luxembourg, etc. Our company eventually was acquired by Rolta. You see a very large company. How many people remember Whitman Hart? Another company was acquired by Rolta, Bob Bernard. One of the great legacies is the Children's Hospital that him and his wife support. We're really software hardware agnostic at the end of the day. We want to use what's the best thing out there. And if you look at once the richest guy in the world, at one point when Microsoft stock went down, Larry Ellison, what does he say? I like leaders, people who take risks, people who do things before they become fashionable. He's saying, I like people who innovate. One of the richest guys in the world. Where did he grow up? Anyone know? Chicago. Chicago. Don't hear enough about him. We don't accept him enough. But the greatest innovator probably on earth in business today, talked about more than, is from Chicago. So I'm going to look at innovation. What's important now? My grandfather was a steel worker. My father was a steel worker. What's the goal in the future? Be a steel worker. Commissioner Steele, be a steel worker. <laughs> Predictive analytics, right? So what is innovation? Creating something new, taking something from an idea like GTF to implementation. Are you leveraging big data, social media? Are you using predictive analytics? The internet of things, all these different smart cities, things like that, or are you still back in the telegraph days? I'm sure there's people still out there saying the telegraph's going to be big. Just need to put a little more money behind it. Things that move, telegraph to telephone, trains to car, went to plastics, computer to smartphones, encyclopedia to Wikipedia. And if you look at it, it's, I have an idea, GTF. It's taken off. I got a few more people that are helping me. Got the commissioner involved. Got some other people involved, some leaders in business, and all of a sudden it takes off. Then there's a next wave of innovation. Now when you get here, you're doing the telegraph, it's taken off, 
at some point it levels out and there's a new technology. And if you stay here, no amount of investment is going to help you to grow that. Some people want to push what's there and you got to take that next wave. Bill Gates stepped down in 1998. What happened? You see that same wave of innovation and leveling off with Microsoft stock. Bill Gates re-engaged 2014. What happened? Next cycle starting. You'll see it in stocks as well. And these disruptive technologies are companies that weren't there before. Amazon wasn't there. How did they pass all these other great companies? Facebook wasn't there. How did they pass them? Because these companies tried to stay with the old technology. They didn't change. And you start with a few users, and then you start taking on the users that are there a lot. If we look at what's coming, you know, email is now Instagram for the younger generation. You know, and if you look at telephones, people are starting to do implants in your ear where you wear something around your neck and it'll communicate, or it's your watch communicating with your phone instead of taking your phone out. So we're moving even faster on this wave. Are you taking advantage of it? The best carpenters use the best tools. Are you using the best tools? Are you using the latest technology? That's the difference. You know, robotics, it's coming. It's either a robot is gonna take your job or you're gonna integrate technology with you to do that job better. And then if I look further down, it'll be a lot of implants and that technology merging with people. If I look at some of the things, they've, they've put chips on a mouse to increase its brain capacity. They'll do the same for you. In fact, they've put a plug in here where she can actually operate this arm. This is something where you put it in your bloodstream and it creates energy, which you then you know, can power your phone or something like that. And I'm like, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think I'm using that much technology. You can look at the things that are coming very fast. Robots, vertical farming, 3D printing where we can print actual body parts. Where, where we can change what the design of the dress is using the internet things with clothing. Where they have smart cities. We actually built a smart city in Dubai, our company. But the future is here, but why? You know, where's my flying car? If it's here, where is it? And the answer is, people have so many different things of technology. This is Gartner's trends, and we see big data here. Predictive analytics, which we saw Commissioner Steele talk about. All of these things are converging at the same time, and a lot of people are having a hard time absorbing all of it. You know, we have shopping data, phone data, credit card data, health data, and all of this is called big data. All that social media. What are people saying about my products? What are they buying? And they can't handle it and they're not creating the future because it's coming at them too fast. And there's too much of it. And it's different. And some of it's high value and some of it's low value. And coming, trying to figure out all those pieces are very difficult. In Moneyball, they say you're not solving the problem. You're not even looking at the problem. Some people are so far in the past, they're looking at how to improve the telegraph instead of looking at Instagram and what's coming next. They're instead of looking at the statistics instead of predictive type of statistics. So with data we used to have, we used to be able to see what happened. Now we can look at why did it happen? What will happen? What's the best thing that could happen if we predict the future and change the present so the future is better? We look at a survey we did here, International Oracle User Group, where is it based? Anyone know? Chicago, right on Michigan Avenue. Compete, what, what are the big data business opportunities? I can compete more effectively, I can better understand my customers, I can grow revenue streams, I can lower business costs. Those are the top things that every CEO, CIO, CFO wants to do. And all they have to do is implement big data. All they have to do is use that innovation. We did this with an oil client, saved them tens of millions to $100 million in downtime just integrating all their systems and leveraging big data. What's after big data? You say, well, I haven't got big data yet. Well, next is gonna be the internet of things. Things like smart cities, your phones, all of these different sensors that are in everything you have from your car to a light pole, to everything out there, to healthcare, to the grid. It can integrate your phone with your watch. 
the baby can wake up and actually warm up the bottle before he even cries. It's moving around and it'll just start warming it automatically. Available today. Your lighting, it will tell you when the light bulb is about to go out before it goes out. So you can just walk up there and the second it goes out, you're changing it. If you really want to go to that level. Your refrigerator, you know, it can integrate with your bathroom scale, so it's like, no, it's locked, sorry. Can't go in. You buy, if you buy some of these foods, then okay, we'll let you in. But not until you fill it with the right stuff. I could use smart energy when energy is a lower price to wash my clothes. They even have cartoons about the Internet of Things. I think my Nest smoke alarm, Google bought them, is going off because Google AdWords just pitched me for a fire extinguisher and temporary housing. <laughs> are you integrating big data and IoT? Because the cartoons already have it. That's how much it's already here. Oh, do I have any eggs? Well, I can check because I have my eggs in this little holder. How many I have left? Animal tracking, if you lose your pet. You want to know if a bear's nearby. People tracking, the new normal. You know, you go through a grocery store and they're watching everywhere you go. You know, and there's a little, he stopped at the Cheez-Its, but he didn't buy them. Why is that? Why is the world moving faster and faster? And the answer is, we're moving from 18-bit to 64-bit. When we moved to 16-bit, we moved from a mainframe and we got Windows because it was 250 times faster. When we moved to 32-bit, it was 4 million times faster and we got the Internet. Right now, we're moving to 64-bit. It's 4 trillion times faster than that jump to the Internet. So if you think there's not going to be any opportunity, I mean, here it is. It's coming. We will never live in a better time in all of history than today. So what did I cover very quickly? Innovation, big data, what's coming next, the Internet of Things. And if you're not a tech person, remember, this is how your tech guys think of themselves. <laughs> this is how most managers think of them. <laughs> Be a future tech leader, integrate technology within yourself and remember, things may come to those who wait, but only the things left by those who hustle. From somebody from Illinois, of course. So build a successful team. Just don't forget about the technology, but don't forget the character attributes, because those are the things that really matter and make the great teams. So thank you, and have a great day.